What is going on, beautiful people? Today, we're going to be talking about how narcissists react at funerals. If you're new here, my name is Lee Hammack. I'm a clinically diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. So boom, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Folks, yes, 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 had to take my glasses off for this one. Um, yeah, narcissists at funerals, narcissists dealing with death and people passing away in their lives and whatnot. Um, what inspired this episode was one of my friends from high school uh, passed away recently. His funeral was today. Um, rest in peace, Mr. TJ. Um, but it just got me to thinking, got me thinking, how do narcissists, deal with funerals because uh, there's a lot of emotions going through my mind of course I, i've been known to do for you know 25 years so, so it's just like that right there can jolt a narcissistic person not just in it, you know death jolts can jolt anybody but it can seriously jolt the narcissistic person because narcissists are afraid d- deathly <laughs> afraid of death like going to funerals can set your narcissistic person off it could trigger the narcissist in your life to start reacting. Like it could change their whole entire personality up. Like the day that they lose someone that they actually care about, or that they actually experience some like death close to them, going to a funeral or something like that, seeing their uh, family member or friend uh, laying there and not get not getting back up or not, that could trigger them to be- behave erratically. That could set them off to the point where you don't know who you know anymore. It's not, it, 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 it'll be like going to a funeral could actually trigger the devaluation phase in your relationship. It could trigger them treating you badly. It can trigger them discarding you because they can start to feel like, oh, I'm missing out on life. I, what am I doing here with you? Like, I'm supposed to be, I'm destined for so much more and I'm stuck here with you. I got some, you know, I have so much potential. I'm, I'm here with you. I have nothing else to do. I, I have nothing else to give. Like this, my life is born. Da 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 this. Da da da. I haven't done enough. My legacy isn't completed, and it can make them actually make them discard you and start to behave differently. Like going to a funeral, and, I, and this is not me telling y'all. Uh, if you were dealing with a narcissist, to you know, if you're dealing with a narcissist, to not to, to not let them go to a funeral. <laughs> you know, what I mean, that this is that's not what I'm saying. That is nowhere near what I'm saying, y'all. I'm saying that if you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person, like after a funeral, just prepare. Prepare for them to be to be different. Prepare for them um, just just in case. Prepare for them to be different. Prepare for them to maybe start to devalue devalue you and disconnect from you. Prepare for that. Because if you prepare for it, it it, it, it doesn't hit you as hard. It's still gonna hit you. But if you prepare for it, it doesn't hit you as hard, like out of nowhere. You see what I'm saying? Like if I'm going to, if I was like, look, if I punch you, let's just let's just take me punching you, or somebody else punching you. I, I'm not, I'm not violent, y'all. Um, this is somebody's going to punch you. If they, if you're just walking forward down the street and somebody cold cocks you, that's going to it'll jolt you, and it might knock you out because you're not anticipating it. You get, you're not prepared for it. You just get hit, right? But if you see the person about to hit you, you can at least brace for it. It doesn't stop it from hurting. You can at least brace for it or get out the way. You at least can take action. So preparing for it, get ready to take action can help you out a lot if they go to a funeral. Because, like, yeah, like, like I said, it could set them off and start making them behave erratically and lose their damn minds and start treating you badly. And li- like, it, it, it can, it, yeah, it can just get bad. I'll say it like that. I, I'll say that as clear as I can. It, 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 it will, it can, and it will get bad. When you're dealing with this type of person and it sucks it sucks to have to deal with this. it sucks to have to process this as a person who's just trying to love them and be there for them you know now if the narcissist in their life goes to the funeral of like a parent that they were you know that they cared for and the parent was like you know just there for them or whatever it was like the, the parent that they, they feel like um in the, any parent they can lose their damn mind, y'all. They really, really can. They can start treating you terribly. If they hated their parent, if the parent that passes away and they go to their funeral, if they internally or externally hated that parent, they might even take it out on you even more. Because, like I say, the narcissist in, their, in his mother, right, 
and they hate and he hated his mom. So he treats women badly. He's going to treat the women around him worse. So he buckle up. You see what I'm saying? So because they can't like funerals for narcissists can set them off. It really can. It can tr- just make them lose their minds and start facing their mortality and start getting rid of and start acting erratically, quitting their job. I'm, I'm wasting time here. Starting a new business, stopping a new business, shutting down stuff. They can lose. Like yeah, I'm just telling you, the funerals can set them off. While while they're actually in the funeral, they might be cool, calm, and collected. You know, while the narcissist is actually in the funeral, they might not show any emotion at all, right? Like they're in the funeral, they're sitting there, standing there, looking at you just like this. They're looking around, seemingly disconnected. Or can some narcissist cry? Yes, some narcissists will be boohoo crying at a funeral. You know, could they be crying because they they miss the person that's gone? Yes, absolutely. But they could also be crying because they want to make themselves the center of attention. They could be crying because they want to make themselves the center of attention at somebody's funeral. The you know wedding crashers. You remember uh, wedding crashers with uh with the Bradley Cooper and Vince Vaughn in it and Owen Wilson. Remember at the, at the end, Will Ferrell was the funeral crasher. He'd go to funerals and start crash, crashing funerals to meet women. It's kind of like that. Boo hoo, cry to get attention. They will use funerals as a way to find new supply. Sometimes funerals can be a the a, a hunting ground for new supply for narcissists. Because like you know, you go to the funeral, you haven't seen somebody in a long time. You haven't you you haven't seen this person since high school or something like that. And you are like, damn, new I need some new supplies. You boo hoo cry. You make your move at a funeral. They use funerals as like hunting grounds for new narcissistic supply. And just with the, yeah, they're hunting for new new supply at a funeral. That just goes to show you that they do have a severe lack of empathy. It is like the empathy is at the bottom. Empathy is the empathy is empty. <laughs> empathy is empty. Yes, it absolutely is. That's how it goes. Empathy and empty. Don't they both start off the same? EMP? Yeah, EMP. <laughs> empathy and empty both begin the same. Like they're empty of empathy when they start acting like that and behaving erratically and trying to find new supply at a funeral. Because like I said, you, you can, sometimes you can find a narcissistic person at a funeral, but just by their face, not everybody cries at funerals. You might not have cried at a funeral, but some narcissists are sitting there. Some of them might be smiling. They might be smiling, making jokes, cracking jokes or whatever it is, you know, because they really might not have cared about the actual person that passed away. They're just using this as a way to increase their reputation. I, Hey, I showed up, I showed up to the funeral Y'all can't say I didn't. Look at me being here for everybody. That's how some narcissist minds work right there. Look at me being here for everybody. Look at all the stuff that I'm doing. Look at all the, look at all, look at look what I'm going through. Look how many people I'm helping. Look how I'm here, aren't I? You see, they should, they make their presence known. Because at the funeral, and like I said, if you have a grudge, like if a narcissist has a grudge, and this is and this can go for y'all. If a narcissist has a grudge or a bone to pick with someone, one right. It doesn't matter if it's at the funeral or not. They're going to go pick that bone. If they have a bone to pick with you or anybody else, and if, even, if, even if it's at a funeral, they will pick that bone with you. They will go all out and come for you and try to get you. That's what they'll do. They literally will try to come get you. They're like, okay, you're going to do this? I got something for you. You know what I mean? I have some. I have a treat for you, pretty much. They're going to come for you. They're going to do things like that, and they're going to. They might argue with you at a funeral. You might have narcissistic rage. That you might. You might see an episode of narcissistic rage at a funeral, because narcissists a lot of times, like I said, they still like to make themselves the center of attention. So they might give you narcissistic rage at a funeral. They might absolutely do that. They might dog whistle you at a funeral. At the funeral, they might be trying to trigger you on purpose. Like you know that they don't like you know that you, you know they know that you don't like something right they don't like when you whistle you in the church you it, you know you know hold on I'm confused right now let me let me, let me, let me narcissist robot confused a little bit the narcissist knows what you don't like right the narcissist knows that you don't like it when they whistle whistle is a tr- whistling is a trigger of yours so guess what they do in church. They whistle, hoping to set you off, hoping to irritate you, knowing that you don't want to make a scene. So they just whistle a little bit here and there just to kind of just get under your skin. They will do things like that. And sometimes they hope to get a reaction from you. They hope that you react to what they're doing so they can make you look like the bad guy. And does it work? Yes, it absolutely does work. This is one of the things that happens to certain people in these situations, in these dynamics. 
Like they will absolutely make be able to set you off and play the victim. Like a lot of narcissists, I, I, I now end it with this. Right, I'm not gonna like, ramble today. Um, I'll end it with this. There's a lot of narcissists that love their repu- they love having a good reputation, so they will come to funerals and put on a put on the show. They'll come to funeral, put on the show. They'll 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 love bomb the people around. They'll love bomb you. Like they'll be tr- they'll, they'll they'll be screaming at you in the car, berating you in the car. But when y'all get inside the church or the uh, the house of worship or whatever y'all you go for your funeral, they'll be acting. They'll be smiling, trying to hold your hand, put their arm around you. They might be fake crying, wiping your tears and stuff like that. They won't put on a show because their reputation is that important to them. It's important enough for them to just act this way at a funeral. To put to, to act like a saint. At a funeral and whatnot, y'all. But anyways, y'all, just to uh, update on my Facebook page, still currently hacked. Um, face- Facebook takes forever to try to get back to you, y'all. So don't buy anything from emotional wellness. I would not change my, ma- my name to mental. I would not change my name for mental illness to emotional wellness, y'all. That is not me. I'm posting weird. Ugh, it's just frustrating, y'all. Anyways, I appreciate every single one of y'all. Mental illness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Helps reach more people. And click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will see you in the next video. Peace.